Hello everyone, this is Pulkit Agarwal, the history faculty at the Youth Destination IAS, New Delhi. So today, what we are going to understand is a very important topic in your art and culture module for the various competitive examinations. Various competitive examinations, when I talk about, it can be your UPSC, it can be your various state civil services. So these are all the things which we are going to talk about from their perspective, we are going to talk about in this particular video, right? So the topic which I have selected for discussion is a very, very important topic known as the temple architecture, known as the temple architecture. Now you must be wondering that what I will do in this particular video, that what I will try and make you people understand in this particular video. So the answer to this particular question is very easy. It's not difficult. So what we are going to do is, we are going to understand that how the most important religious structure in Hinduism began to be developed and how it went through various processes before getting into the final form or before getting into the form which we can see in the present times, right? So we are going to talk about the evolution of the temples in the various regions of India, right? In the various regions of India. So in the temple series, we are going to talk about the basic features of the temple, that what exactly are the parts which are consisted in your temple architecture. We are going to talk about the styles of temple architecture like your Nagara, Dravida, Vesara. And after talking about these particular styles, we are also going to see whether these main styles are divided into sub-styles or not. Right? We are also going to see the sub-schools of these main styles. Right? So that is something which we are going to do in this particular temple series. Right? So let's begin by understanding that how exactly the temple began to be made and from where exactly we can see and trace the evolution of the temple. Right? Okay. So as you can see, as you can see that temples they might not have been there for a very long time, but still the people were praying. Still the people were offering their respect to the God. They were still kind of thankful to the God for life. The structure within which all these activities began to be held, the structures within which you started paying your respect, the structure within which now you know that this is the definite place where we are going to go and pay our homage to the God began to be developed at a very late stage and that stage came to be known as your Gupta period. That stage came to be known as your Gupta period. And Gupta period actually started from your 4th century, the early decades of the 4th century as you can see on the board also and it continued until your mid-sixth century, until your mid-sixth centuries, right? So Gupta period was fairly long period in the Indian history. Sometimes people, they even term Gupta period as the golden age of the ancient Indian society. Golden age, why? Because architecture began to bloom, literature began to bloom, there were inventions in science and technology, right? There were innovations. There was the literature which was written just like your people like Kalidas, they were present, right? Education was getting spread. Trade, that was going to far off places. India was having a very flourishing trade with your Roman Empire. So that is why Gupta period is seen as the golden age and that is the befitting idea as to why the temples also began to be made from this particular time. 
because these people were giving encouragement to the various forms of art and architecture. These people were the patrons of your beautiful architecture, which we can see. Although not all of have all of it have survived, but still, whatever is there, we can still see how marvelous it would have been, right? So that is what exactly started during the time of the Guptas. And as you can see on the slide, Gupta period, the evolution of the temple was not exactly like, okay, fine, the temples are now very elaborate, temples are very beautiful. Gupta period, the temples, they began to be made from very, very rudimentary structures. They began to be made from very, very rudimentary structures to your very, very elaborate structures. From rudimentary to elaborate structures, that is how exactly we are going to trace the development of temples in the Gupta age. And for that, we are going to see and understand that how in various stages of the temple development, the temples began to be made from very humble structures to the elaborate structures, right? And what features of the temples were added at each passing generation, at each passing stage. So that is what we are going to do now. Understand the evolution of the temple architecture starting from the time of the Guptas. So, when I talked about the five features or the five stages of temple construction, here are they on the board, right? Here are they on the board. Now we are going to understand <clears throat> that how exactly the temple began to be developed from a very humble beginning to that of the elaborate shape which we see in the present times, right? As you can see, the, the, the temple in the picture, you can see the temple in the picture. This temple looks like a very, very simple structure in which some pillars have been erected and there is a, some kind of a flat roof. So that is how exactly the temples in the first stage began to be developed. That they had a very flat roof. You can see they had a very flat roof and they were not very elaborate. They were not very elaborate. And also you can see sometimes people might not even think of these as the temples because they are very, very simple. That is why when we see the first stage, this is your first stage of temple construction. And you can see the features, that is the flat roof, which is already available in the first feature. It has a flat roof and it is in square shape. Yes, it is in square shape and it is built on a low platform, right? Because if you see later on, the platform of the temple, it's going to get increased. The height is going to get increased. So it is now later on that the temples will be placed on a higher platform. But if you see, it is not on a very high platform. It is quite on a low platform. It is on a quite low platform. So that is something which we have to understand. That the flat roof, this is the first feature which you need to understand in the first stage. Square shape, which you can see on the board. Low platform, this is the, another keyword for the exam. And the entrance have shallow pillars. If you see, if you see this is the entrance. This is the entrance. If you see the entrance, the entrance to the temple, the pillars, the pillars here, the pillars here, they are not very elaborate and they are not very big. They are smaller in size, right? And these features, they are going to get more developed as we move further into history, right? Because history is mostly about the evolution. How? Because the human was walking on four limbs, then he started walking on two legs. From being exploited by the environment, he started exploiting the environment. The similar logic will apply over here also. People thought of a structure to place the God, a permanent structure to place the God where they can come and pray and slowly and steadily this structure is going to get developed 
into very, very elaborate structure. But this is how exactly we can see that the humble beginning, that the humble beginning can be seen of your first stage. So the important keywords here are shallow pillars at the entrance, flat roof, square shape built on a low platform. And the example which you can see is temple number 17 at Sachi, which is located in your Madhya Pradesh, which is located in your Madhya Pradesh. So that is how we can see the evolution of the temple in the first stage, in the first stage. Now let's go on to the second stage of temple construction. Second stage of temple construction. Now the point is, now the point is, if you see, if you see the features, most of the features of the first stage, they actually continued, right? It is not like कि पहली वाली stage खत्म हो गई है, तो उसके features आगे नहीं आएंगे, उसके features भी चलेंगे. For example, you can see, if there has been the development of New Delhi, do you think the features of the Mughal India or features of Old Delhi, they have totally vanished from Delhi? No, they are still there. People are still practicing what used to happen during that particular point of time. So it is a mixture of the new practices and the early practices. Similarly, in the temple architecture, the basic features will continue, but now what is going to happen is, there is going to be slight improvement in those basic features from one stage to another. Ek stage se dusri stage pe ab dheere dheere development nazar aane lagegi. Aur wo kaise nazar aegi? Let's see that. If you can see that most of the features continued, but the most important thing which came out here is that the platform of the temple, platform of the temple became little higher. Platform of the temple became little higher. So you can see that the platform is now higher as compared to the higher as compared to the earlier stage. Higher as compared to the earlier stage. This is the platform. This is the platform in the first stage. And now look at the platform in the second stage. It is little higher than the first stage. Little higher than the first stage. Right? So that is something which we need to understand when we are talking about this particular stage. And secondly, what used to happen is, now there was a covered ambulatory passage. There was a covered ambulatory passage or the Padikshana path. Covered ambulatory passage or the Padikshana path. What is that? Everybody has been to the temple. Everybody has been to the temple. And in the temple, you people must have done a thing known as Parikrama. Parikrama around the main sanction, sanctum sanctorum. Parikrama around the main Garbhagriha. Right? There is this Garbhagriha in the mid and what people do is they just go around that particular Garbhagriha in this circular motion. So that Parikrama is known as your Padikshana. Padikshana, which we do by legs, which we do by our own feet. That is known as Padikshana. And path is something on which we walk, on which we do this. Right? So Padikshana path began to be now covered. Earlier it was not covered. People just used to go around the temple like that. But now the Padikshana path was covered and it was covered for the benefit of the people who were visiting that particular temple so that they can pray in a much more peaceful manner and they can be protected at the same time from the sun or any sort of environmental problems, rain, sun, whatever, right? So now the Padikshana path became to be covered and the platform began to be little higher platform began to be little higher. So these are the two developments which are taking place in the second stage, which are taking place in the second stage, right? Now let's see that what are the developments from the second stage towards your third stage, from the second stage towards your third stage, second stage towards your third stage, right? Now. In the third stage, what we see is the emergence of shikhar instead of flat 
roof. What we see is the emergence of shikhar. Shikhar which is on the top. This is your shikhar. Shikhar which is on the top of your garb griha. Which is on the top of your garb griha. Garb griha or where the main, main deity was placed. Main deity meaning where exactly the main god of that particular temple was placed. Right? So that was known as your Garbh Griha. Right? We will be discussing about Garbh Griha. But now, for because it came here only, so I am discussing this. So Shikhar began to be added. Shikhar began to be added. As you see, and you can go back to the previous slide, that in the first stage, the Shikhar was not there. The roof was actually flat. The roof was flat in the first stage. But now, as we come to the third stage, as we come to the third stage, Shikhar began to be developed. Lekin ek aisi ek cheez hai, ki Shikhar develop hona start hua. But ek point hume haa pa yeh samajna padega, ki Shikhar jo develop hua hai, it will not be as elaborate a Shikhar as we are going to see in the present times. Shikhar will develop, but it will take time to get into the elaborate form as we can see it today. So, in a rudimentary form, a shikhar developed. Right? So, that was the first feature which was added in the third stage. And what is it? Now, point is, as I told you, they were still quite low. I told you, right? I told you at, just at this juncture only that the shikhars, they were still not very elaborate and still not very, very high. Because they have just been started to develop, right? They are just like a small kid who is starting to walk on, not on his full legs, but on his hands. The shikhar is also like the same thing, right? So this is how exactly we can see, right? And one more thing began to be developed. One more thing began to be developed. That is your Panch Yatan style of construction. Panch Yatan style of construction. And what is Panchatan style of construction? I am going to tell you. <coughs> See, Panchatan style of construction. Panchatan style. Okay. So when we talk about the Panchatan style, we need to understand the meaning of the word first of all. Right? What do we understand by the term Panchatan? What do we understand by the term Punch yatan. Punch means five. Punch means five. So in this basic idea of the punch yatan style of construction, we are going to see that now five temples or the five small small garbhagrihas began to be developed within a single temple complex. Five small small temple or small garbhagrihas began to be developed within a single temple complex. For example, at the center, at the center was your first Garbhagriha, which was sometimes also known as the main temple, which was known as the main temple. Secondly, there was the second main temple, then there was this third main temple, and then there was this fourth, sorry, not main temple, but the subsidiary temples. And this was your fifth subsidiary temples. This was the fifth subsidiary temple. So the main temple at the center was always going to be much more elaborate, much more bigger in size and was given much more importance as compared to the other temples which are present inside the, the same complex. Right? So this is known as the Panch Yatan style. When you have a main temple, which is bigger, elaborate, much more important. And then there are small, small temples which are present in that particular complex. They can be like this also, like the temple can be in between and they can be on the side and they can be in another form also that the temple can be in between and they can be surrounding that particular main temple. So that was known as the Panch Yatan style of construction. And it is very easy to understand. People who have gone to the temple, they must have seen that 
the name of the temple tells you that which god is important inside this particular temple for example some temples are dedicated to sherawali mata some temples are dedicated to lord shiva right so point is their their garbagriha their temple is going to be very very big and elaborate and people like there are other gods also their temples in the same complex they are going to be there but not very very elaborate so that is known as the panchyatan style of construction which began to be used in this particular stage right so that is something which we have to understand right so panchyatan style began to be developed okay fine now now from the third stage now from the third stage we now move on to the fourth stage from the third stage we now move on to the third stage right okay point is that i told you that the features of the earlier age wo sab abhi bhi chalenge wo khatam nahi honge hoga kya unke upar aur naye features add ho jayenge right unke andar aur zyada naye features add ho jayenge aur wo kaise add honge point is the main shrine main shrine or the main temple jahan pe sabse zyada us jagah ke important god hain that particular place will become more elaborate as i told you earlier also panchatan style panchatan style the main temple is elaborate and important and similarly in the fourth stage that effect will be seen now main temple more elaborate as compared to the others and it will be much more rectangular right pehle wo square hua karta tha zyada ab that will be more in rectangular form and the example of this fourth stage is the siddheshwara temple at sholapur maharashtra siddheshwara temple at sholapur maharashtra you must be wondering sir aap jo bol rahe ho usse hisab se ye temple structures to bahut zyada elaborate lag rahe hain point is these temple structures were also made more elaborate more beautiful as the time progressed what i am just trying to show in these pictures is that these were the example of the various stages but we cannot get the exact pictures of that particular stage so just to show you an example i have included these in my particular ppt right so that is the basic idea so the siddheshwara temple at sholapur is a very good example of the fourth stage when the main shrine becomes more elaborate and rectangular and all the other features continue told you jo bhi sare features pehle the wo abhi bhi chal rahe hain so that is something which we need to understand and now finally this is the fifth stage of temple construction this is the fifth stage of temple construction point is sare features wahi chale jo pehle se chalte aa rahe aur chalenge bhi because they have evolved because wo add kare gaye the to aisa to hai nahi ki that we are going to subtract those features and then we are going to add new features aisa to nahi hone wala what is going to happen is that on the top of those particular features we are going to add more new features so that is something which you have to understand to so, iske andar kya hai now there was a new style of introduction so there was a new style of temple construction which came to be introduced in the fifth stage and that was known as your circular temples as you can see as you can see the circular temples began to be developed right up till now the temples are square they were rectangular but now a new feature was added which was known as the circular temple and the best example of this is kamakya temple in assam kamakya temple in assam so now you can see the circular temples being made so that was a feature in the fifth stage and when you are talking about the kamakya temple what i am going to tell you is that kamakya temple is not only important for the fifth stage but kamakya temple is very important itself also why sabse pehle to ye samajhna padega ki kamakya temple hai kahan pe it is in assam and assam right and who constructed it it was the ahom dynasty it is the ahom dynasty which constructed 
your Kamakya temple, right? And it is a very important place because it is a Shakti Peet. It is a Shakti Peet. Like we have the Jyotirlings of Shiva, there are some Shakti Peets in India. And Kamakya Devi temple in Assam is one of those Shakti Peet. And point is, it becomes even more important because here the people perform some sort of magical rituals. Here the people, they are inspired by the ideas of tantric rituals, right? So this temple becomes very, very important. And this kind of question was seen recently in 223 competitive examination and one of them being your UPSC. That what is the importance of Kamakya temple and to which stage of temple development does it belong to? So that is why I am dealing with this particular idea even more. So now, as we come towards the end of the five styles of construction, I'll just like to kind of go back and tell you once more in a very, very fast manner. Not very fast so that you people can catch it in a, in a kind of a speed where everybody is able to recall that what we have done so far, right? So this was the first feature, first stage. Temples are now in square shape, mein hai, right? Dheere dheere low platform pe develop hai abhi hai. Thik hai? Aur entrance bhi hai, abhi wo chhoti hai. That was the first stage. Second stage mein almost sari cheeze hi chalengi. Platform thoda bada ho jayega. Aur jo padikshana paate hai, jahan par log padikrama karte hai, that is going to get covered, which was not covered in this first stage. Third feature ke andar kya hoga? First or second, dono ke features add ho jayenge. Aur ek nea feature add hoga, jo kehte hai hum jise shikhar. Shikhar on the top of your Garbhagriha. Abhi utna zada elaborate nahi, but still it is going to be developed. And along with that, what we have is your Panch Jatan style. Panch Jatan style will be developed in which there will be a main temple and there will be then your subsidiary temples. There will be then your subsidiary temples or you can say subsidiary shrines within the same temple complex. That is something which you have to understand, right? So in the fourth stage, almost everything continued. But the point is now people began to feature, people began to kind of concentrate on the main shrine and it was made even more elaborate and rectangular. Now in the fifth stage, as you saw in the first stage, the temples are mostly square, but now the temples began to be made in a rectangular form. So these were the five stages of evolution of the temple architecture starting from the time of the Guptas. Guptas, which was the golden age, from the time of Guptas, it was decided that now we need to give our gods a basic feature, a permanent place to actually rest and where all the deities will come to them and offer their prayers. So these are the five stages of temple construction, right? Okay. Thank you.